Welcome everybody, Johnny Keck over at Ant Futures. Thanks for tuning in. This is our next segment and uh, our final segment in terms of going over the actual dome. In this final segment, we're going to cover just some of the, uh, the simple mechanics of how to use the actual dome in terms of making modifications, whether you're changing the background color, uh, perhaps you want to pin the dome. So if you click on a window outside of the dome, it doesn't minimize the dome, which can be sometimes annoying. And just showing you some of the simple things that you might see on the screen that you might have questions about. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to show you is uh, I want to go ahead and right click on the actual dome and give you a rundown of the property menus here that you can see when you right click with your mouse on the actual dome itself. Of course, you can disconnect your data feed, uh, which I'm not going to do at this moment. But if you do want to disconnect it, you can go ahead and right click and do that. Uh, the symbol mapping, which allows you to go and add different instruments. The dynamic price scale, I, I explained the difference between a, a dynamic price scale versus a semi-static dome in the first segment of the dome portion of our video tutorial series. Now let me go over these particular check options here. So always show entire number. I currently have all the options checked, but watch what happens when I uncheck always show entire number. Keep your eye right around here. You can see right now it's giving me an exact tally of all the bids and the offers that are currently accumulated in the actual depth of market. So if I uncheck always show entire number, it's just going to round it off and give me, if it's under 1,000 or over 1,000, it's going to round it off. It won't give me an exact value. However, if I right click and actually show the entire number, it will give me an exact figure. Okay, so that's exactly what that does. Again, it just gives you a tally of these values here in the buy column or the offer column at the bottom of your dome. Now, if I right-click and I show bid as sum, it's checked right now. If I simply uncheck it, you'll see that it completely goes away. I like that, so I'm going to leave it checked. If you want to see visually, if you notice these little bracket or markers on the dome, that's the high of the day and that's the low. So if you uncheck the show day high, high low, you'll see that goes away. I'm also a fan of that as well, so I'll go ahead and leave that checked. Uh, the range is rather tight. It's about 721 here in California, so markets are very slow at this current state or moment. Now if I right click back again, now one thing I want to let you know, you want to make sure that you're not right clicking in the actual buy or sell columns because if you go ahead and right click, it's giving you the ability to actually place a trade. So you don't want to do that. You either want to right click in the off gray area or the middle price column. Usually the middle price column is going to be your best bet to get this particular menu option. And then you have show volume profile. The volume profile is this volume profile here, which I've explained earlier in our video tutorial series. If you right click and uncheck it, it just simply gives you more actually makes your dome smaller so therefore if you have no reason to use the volume profile you can simply uncheck it. I personally like it so I'm going to go ahead and leave it and now if you don't want the P&L column to display you could uncheck that as well and now you only have the volume profile. I, however I'm pretty much a fan of all the functions that are checked so for myself my personal preference I'm going to go ahead and leave those options checked. Now in terms of changing background colors or font size I have really bad eyes so it could be you know, I, I definitely want to be able to get the, uh, the font as big as I can. In terms of resizing the dome, that's very simple. All you have to do, just take your mouse cursor either on the bottom edge boundary of the actual dome itself or the top half here. What you're looking for is your arrow cursor to turn into a double-sided arrow. Once you see that, you're going to want to left-click and just simply drag and resize, just like any other window. All right, and then if you right-click on the actual dome, you can go to Select Font. And from here, you can go ahead and change your font. So if right now this font is a bit too small, you might want to make it a little bigger. Just simply increase the font size. So I'll go from 10 to 12, for example. And notice now the dome is a lot bigger, and I can see that it's a much larger display. Uh, for myself, the 10 font is fine, so I'm going to go ahead and revert back to the 10. But you have the luxury of going in here and choosing what font, what font style, and you can go ahead and make your changes accordingly. Again, that's right-clicking on the dome. Go to Select Font. In terms of formatting colors, if you format the colors, that's going to allow you to manipulate and change the color of the actual dome itself. So for example, if you like the stop order background, what I mean by stop order background is if you place a style stop here, notice that background is a grayish color, or not a grayish color, but more of a brownish color. So watch what happens if I right click format colors. I can go ahead and click in the color template and I can go ahead and change that background color as you can see there. I typically like to leave most of the stuff as default. I'm okay with the colors. However, everybody has a different preference. So the main thing is understanding where to go to change those colors accordingly based on your preference. The, main, the best thing that you're going to want to do is just go in there and check you know, each one of the parameters. I won't go through the entire list, but it, I'm, pretty much, I'm sure you'll get the idea here on what to do. You just got to make sure you go in there and click on the color template. And if you're not satisfied with the available color templates, you can always click other and you can actually select this color spectrum here. You can move a little 
tab up and down, you can actually create your own custom colors. All right, for the most part, the selections are pretty good, so I'm going to usually I don't have to do that. But uh, of course, again, for your personal preference, you do have the option to do that. So what I would do is go around and kind of play around with the different colors and see how that looks on the actual dome. And if it fits to what you like, then go ahead and go, and go ahead and run with it. For now, I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel, leave everything as default. And uh, that's pretty much how to, to, to format your fonts and colors. Again, I mentioned you can always disable the, the sound alerts. Now the switch to compact mode, this option here, what that actually does, it basically disables the bottom half of the dome, which you can see the place order and extra strategy. So if I right click and switch to compact mode, notice now the dome is just showing me the actual depth of market. So this is probably ideal if you have no purpose in using any of these buttons or quick buttons here, and you just want, have, you want to have yourself more real estate on the actual dome, so you can see more of the price ladder itself. I very seldomly come across a client that uses this particular model. I personally like having the extra strategies on the actual dome, and I like the ability to see my open position display as well. So I prefer to stay in full mode versus compact mode. However, if you do like that, you can switch to compact mode. By right-clicking on your dome, switch to compact mode. Now in terms of pinning your dome, what I mean by pin, watch what happens when I click on this chart behind the dome. You see how my chart just disappears? So that sometimes can be a bit annoying, especially if you have one monitor and you have to maneuver and manipulate or move and work around within one monitor display. So that's going to be very inconvenient. Anytime you need to go to a different function outside of the dome and all of a sudden your dome goes away, you've got to go back and repopulate it. So what I would recommend doing is just pin the dome on the top right corner. You'll see stick window. If you click that, you'll see that pin icon will face south. Now no matter what, window I'm clicking outside of the dome, my dome will never minimize. All right, so that's probably going to be something that you want to do if you happen to run into that problem. Otherwise, if you don't, if you have a multi-monitor multi -monitor display, which I, I do see a lot of customers have, um, you can always unstick it and not have to worry about it. This little icon there is just basically a shortcut to switch to compact mode and switch to full mode. And then you see here your basic minimize, maximize, and close buttons here. So those are going to be just like any other window within the Windows operating system. And also, one thing I, forget to, I forgot to mention in the previous video, I want to show you something real quick. I'm going to get into a quick position by hitting Buy Market here. I wanted to show you a little cool thing that you can change your P&L display. If you left-click in the open P&L display here, you can change it to display in ticks. You can change it to show in percentages or you can change it to show an actual dollar value. So that's something that's nice that customers like. If you prefer a certain display method, just left click to change the display, and then whenever you're satisfied with the display, go ahead and leave it as is. So I like, I like the dollar sign, I'm gonna keep it as is. I like seeing the actual dollar value when I'm in a position. And that pretty much concludes the dome segment of the multicharts.net video tutorial series. We're gonna move on to other aspects of the platform. The next segment, we're gonna focus on chart trading. Chart trading is another way to place trades off the actual platform where you can execute trades right off the chart. Another popular way to place trades using multi-charts, and we'll definitely get into that in our next segment. Thank you guys for your time. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.